Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing another unboxing. And um, let's take a look at what we have in here. This is a pretty heavy box. And uh, I'm kind of surprised at how small the box that this actually came in. So uh, let's see what's in there. So we seem to have an ample amount of maker rail. So that's a, a good thing. And uh, it's kind of all shrink wrapped. Now, this is the funny kind. This doesn't have the V slot in it. This is more like the tarantula, um, where I think you can see how this, this is. So, uh, got a lot of it here. So, that's a good thing. Let's take this out. <clears throat> we have lead screws. That's a good thing. We have three lead screws, so that should be a hint. Put those off. We got some uh, linear motion rods that are capped at the end, which is nice. We have some, ooh, look at this piece. This is a good sized piece. Uh, the way it looks is this has all been shrink wrapped and it's all been cut probably by a CNC machine or saw while it was shrink wrapped. Uh, what's this? Oh, this is the power, this must be the power supply. Well, that's a pretty good power supply. 100 to 240, 1.8 amp. That's rather big for, for that. Obviously, the plug. <clears throat> Another power supply. Wow. Um, what's this one? Now, interestingly, this is 12 volt 5 amp. This is. That's input 1.8 amp. Output also 24 volt 5 amp. So this must be for the motors and this must be for the electronics I'm thinking. Ah, what's in here? Chinese writing. Ah, uh, looks like we got an Uno and some ramp board and some cable and all kinds of cool stuff stuff that we can assemble and <clears throat> let's take let's take these out and send them down here and I'm gonna lose this box goes into the box pile so let's see so this seems to be all the hardware wow a lot of pieces a lot of pieces. I'm getting nervous now. I haven't built a kit since uh, the tarantula. And I kind of thought this one would be easy. So here we have the motors. And we have this motor. Does this give it a hint? Does this give it away what it is? Hopefully. Uh, and the fact we only have three motors could be a tarantula, but I doubt it with this. And then let's see what else do we have. Oh, we got a few bits. Well, I think this is definitely gives it away. What I've ordered here is a desktop CNC uh, machine. So they, they, they classify it sort of as an engraver. It comes with a small DC motor. This is the, the spindle motor, actually. Um, and this is, this is the bed. I'll put a picture up in the corner so you can kind of see what it looks like. I got it, um, I can't remember, I think it might have been off gear best. I, uh, I'll have... I have a link for it down below, but this is the size of the table. Now, because one of the things I wanted to do, and you've probably already seen the vacuum former already, the desktop vacuum former, the 5x5. Five five. So I, I thought this was really an interesting uh, project, or would be a really interesting project. I, you know, because I love the CNC machine, the, one of the problems is, is the size. Um, and, and, and depending on what you want to use it for, too. So. One of the things I noticed on this channel, a lot of folks, um, there was one viewer that um, uh, makes uh, coin rings. And, and that really got me interested in the fact of what other crafting hobbies are out there. And how could these 2.5 to 3D manufacturing technologies really help them. Now, you know, you, you guys know I've got a 3040 CNC. i got a probotic CNC. i got three, this would be the third CNC machine. I've got five or six 3D printers, two la two large laser cutters, one small laser cutter, um, so a lot of stuff. In other words, and the, but the idea is that a lot of that's pretty big. 
and probably bigger than most hobbyist crafters have room for or can really accommodate. So one of the things I wanted to do in 2017, or at least the beginning part of 2017 to do, is look at some of the smaller stuff like this. So look at the smaller, maybe more of the micro stuff. Because even at this size, I think this can be really productive. If you're into jewelry, you want to do engraving, um, light machining of uh, plastics, I, I think this machine will actually do pretty good. Um, this is still a pretty beefy little spindle for what it is. And you could probably, and one of the things that I might actually do as part of this uh, uh, build series, well, probably not the build series, but part of the mini CNC series, is upgrade the spindle to like a 400 watt uh, DC spindle um, and see. But well, let's see what this does first, because again, I think if you slow it down enough, it might do some pretty interesting things. And so, what am I hoping to get out of this? I'm hoping to be able to cut out acrylic. Uh, light wood, uh, different type of resins, for example, like jewelry, um, potentially glass. That's I'll get to that a little bit later, not in this video, but another one. Uh, you'll see that. Uh, but things like that um, that can be used for, again, small Etsy type crafting, mostly in jewelry or decorative type stuff. I think this will work great. And the piece is, is this can be contained in a rather small space you know so so if you just have a simple craft room you know not a big workshop you know you can still accommodate something like this and it's also um, I want to work it out simple enough that you know you can use probably Inkscape you know the G code from Inkscape uh, plugin to actually run this and this is what we're really going to focus on and I'm going to try experimenting with and see how realistic that is and so hopefully you guys will follow along if you have any questions or comments now, you know, let me know down below that you'd like to see with this. I am going to do probably a couple build videos. I, I doubt I'm going to get into it. There's a couple, I believe, they're Russian or Eastern European based uh, build videos out there for this. And I think there's one Chinese build video with, with no sound. Uh, I, I'm not sure I'm going to go into that deep of a detail, but I think I'm going to do like the tarantula. It's probably do like three segments where I build a face, talk about it, build a face, talk about it, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, anyways, hopefully you're going to find this interesting. Also, if you know of any type of what I'd call desktop or semi-micro device you would like me to take a look at and potentially review, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'll order it, get it in, and it'll be in an upcoming series. If you're thinking about it, uh, maybe I should be thinking about it too, and we can do do an um, episode or two on it. Uh, again, if it's not hugely expensive, I'm not going to go out and buy a multi-thousand dollar machine. But if it's reasonable, hey, I'll kick it around and consider it. So stay tuned for the build on this. Um, again, we'll come back. We'll do another video of uh, kind of laying everything out. And then, you know, assembly one, two, three, and then done. And then we'll kick off probably some series of using it. So... Hopefully you're going to find this interesting. If you think it is, you will. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget the swag shop. Subscribe button will be coming up there in a little bit. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, that way you kept, you're you kept updated. If you are a subscriber, again, my great thanks to you. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.